Testing, testing. This is the Sony FX6, and I actually just picked it up a couple days ago. I switched from a Blackmagic cinema camera. I wanna talk about what are some of the differences, what I like about the Sony, what I like more about the Blackmagic, and if it was a mistake to switch. Let's talk about it. For the overall feeling of the camera, the Sony has to win. The ergonomics are much better than the Blackmagic. It feels more compact. Even if it is bigger, it's still a bit lighter. So when you have the body of the camera and the V-mount right next to each other, compared to on a Blackmagic, you'd have to rig it out and the battery comes out to here, it feels like it's really long. So the nice thing about the Sony is that everything is compact, it's light, the top handle feels nice. Overall, I just like the build of the Sony better. It feels more like a cinema camera. And all of the buttons on the side here are very confusing to get used to if you're coming from something like a Blackmagic camera or if you've never used the Sony system before. It's very different from an FX3 or an FX30, which I'm filming on right now. So this is a bit of a learning curve. And like I said, I've only filmed with it a couple times, so it's something that I'm very much still getting used to, but I like it. Everything is easily accessible. You can program lots of the buttons, and I love being able to record on the top handle with this little button here, and on the side grip with this little button here. So for the overall build and the ergonomics, the Sony camera takes it for me. But what about image quality? In my opinion, it's one of the things that I care about the most. Even if people can't tell the difference between a 6K sensor and a 4K image. Does it really matter? I don't think the pixel count matters as much as people make it out, but I do like the flexibility you get with the Blackmagic 6K Pro. If you edit color in DaVinci, it is so insanely flexible. You can change all of the raw settings because you can actually film raw video in the Blackmagic 6K. Whereas with the Sony, even though it's a more expensive camera, you can't film raw unless you film externally in an Atomos monitor. But that's more money, it's more work, you have to get separate SSD, it's just a lot. But you are working with a crop sensor in the Blackmagic. So I have an 18 to 35 lens, that's way more zoomed in than and 18 to 35 for the Sony. So I really like the look of the full frame sensor. It just feels bigger. And when you're working on certain projects and you need to be following someone closely, having a full frame sensor is gonna be really helpful. Everyone knows that Sony has the best low light capabilities in their cameras. And that is no different with the Sony FX6, 800 and 12,800 dual native ISOs. If you don't know what dual native ISO means, if you film an image, you want it to look as clean and as noiseless or grainless as possible. You want that sharp image. And the Sony cameras typically do this at 800 and 12,800 ISO. And everything in between that starts introducing noise to your image. So you want to either stick to 800 if you're filming in the daylight and just turn up an ND filter, which 
the Sony has internal NDs with this little knob here. Or if you're filming in the dark, you wanna turn the base ISO up to 12,800. And even though you're at a way higher ISO, it still looks completely clean because of the dual native ISO technology. So on the Blackmagic camera, your dual native ISOs are I believe 400 which is lower, and 3200, which is a lot lower than 12,800. And it does make a big difference. I recently just shot two projects, which required me to go in low light. One was for fun, testing out the Sony, and you can see the image quality it looks great. It's super clean. I love the colors on it. And the other one is on the Blackmagic. This was for a client, and we we're filming in the early morning with a farmer. And it looks good, but I had to do quite a bit of work to it. And if you zoom in closely, you can still kind of see the noise. So just some differences. I'm gonna go over a quick list of things that I love about the Sony and things that I hate about the Sony. And I'm gonna do the same for the Blackmagic. Try and make it as unbiased as possible. Again, I've been filming with the Blackmagic a lot longer, but here's my initial thoughts. I love the full frame look of the Sony FX6. I haven't worked much with full frame cameras and when I got to this, zooming out to 24 mil, which is what I have on here right now, 24 to 70, it feels so big and I love that. Next up is the autofocus, which is a big reason why I purchased the Sony FX6. I do a lot of run and gun documentary work and just you have to be ready whenever something pops up. So when I have to pull focus on my Blackmagic camera, it can be really difficult to get the right shot at the right time and hit focus. All of these things, I've gotten good at it, but it's just one more thing to think about. And I was done with it. So the autofocus works great. It performs well in low light when it's underexposed and also when it's overexposed. It has eye tracking, face tracking, everything works great. The next thing I really like is the Sony has XLR inputs, full-sized XLR on the top handle. So if you do take the top handle off of the Sony, you can't have XLR inputs and it really limits the audio options that you have. But if you're using with top handle, it's great. If you take a look at the Blackmagic camera, if we open it up here, all right, so it should be focused there. You can see there's two mini XLRs, but it's actually really annoying because you have to get adapters if you actually want to use the mini XLRs with an XLR microphone like the Sennheiser 416. So it's just kind of a pain. Whereas this one, you can plug the microphone straight in and it works great. Another really underrated feature of the Sony, in my opinion, from using it is this handle. This side handle is so ergonomic and you can adjust it. So if you push this button in, you can rotate it. So good. It's just so comfortable. I can hold it, you know, with one hand. I don't feel like it's gonna fall off at any point. All of the handles that are included, they all feel really great. Okay, so the things that I don't like about the Sony is also the thing I like about it, the top handle. If you're using the top handle, it's great. If you're not using the top handle, it sucks for audio. So you just gotta be wary of that. Uh, you're gonna have to find other solutions like external recorders, like I'm recording on right now. Let's see. Zoom H6, and this guy works great. You can see it has four XLR inputs and a 3.5 at the top. So if you wanna record externally like I'm doing, then you don't need to worry about it. If you wanna record internally straight to the camera so everything syncs up really nicely, you're gonna to wanna to keep using the top handle. Next up is exposing the image for S-Log3. It's really difficult to get used to for someone who comes from a Blackmagic system. I basically expose it how I see it, on the Black Magics, whereas on the Sony's, when you're recording in S-Log3, you need to record about one and a half to two stops above where you actually want the image. When I was shooting on the mountain, I was overexposing everything and I didn't have Cine EI mode on, and I couldn't tell if the image was actually looking good or not until I brought it back home into my workflow. And it did look great, but it's just another thing to think about in your production, right? you don't wanna be guessing if your image is looking good or not. The menu system sucks, it, j it just does. I'm sorry for Sony users, coming from a Blackmagic where the menu system is so incredibly easy to use, Sony system sucks in comparison. And lastly, the built-in monitor is not great. Um, I have it actually mounted to the back here. So if you can see, it's a bit dark, but if you can see this, I put it close to the back so that it doesn't get in the way up here. I like to mount a second monitor 
right up top here. And the built-in monitor, it's just not bright. It doesn't function great. The touch controls, they haven't been great for me. Um, yeah, just not good. All right, and let's talk about things that I really like about the Blackmagic 6K Pro. The image quality, like I've been mentioning, is beautiful and it's flexible. If you get creative with it, you can really make some incredible things. Even in low light, I've worked with it before and it's great. It works better and faster in DaVinci Resolve, which for my workflow was really nice. I loved being able to scrub through the timeline and everything plays really seamlessly. The Blackmagic also has built-in ND filters, but they're a little bit different. So they work in stops of ND. So when you hit the ND plus button, which is on the back here, right here, when you hit that button, a stop of ND comes down and it's, how do, you, how, how do I describe this? It's two stops of ND. And if you don't know what that means, it basically underexposes your image by two stops. And then if you press it again, it underexposes it by four stops. And then again, six stops. So the Blackmagic has up to six stops of internal ND filters. And the Sony camera has a variable ND, which basically means you can turn this dial just with your thumb and then it will electronically change. So there's no hard stops. It's a very gradual change, which is really nice. And it can go up to seven stops of ND. So it's a little bit more powerful than the Blackmagic. Another big reason why I bought this camera is because of the EF mount. I had all of my Canon lenses from when I first started, and this was compatible with all of my Canon stuff. So I saved a ton of money not having to buy new lenses. Whereas when I switched to the Sony FX6, I had to spend another, a good chunk of money, as we all know, for Sony lenses. I actually opted for Sigma because it's a third of the price and it works great. And lastly, the menu system is super intuitive. If you've ever worked with Blackmagic cameras, I think anyone could pick them up within a day or two. Whereas with the Sony, I've been watching tons of videos and I've been testing it out and it's still, it's still a learning curve. The most difficult things for me with the Blackmagic camera was the fact that it didn't have autofocus and the fact that the image could be really jittery and unstable sometimes. So I know cinema cameras, it's standard. They don't have autofocus. They don't have stabilization and that's fine. I get it. I've used it for like two years now. So trust me, I've worked with it a long time and I can't complain that much for the price, but with the Sony, you do get the feature of autofocus, which again, just takes a lot of the pressure off of me when I'm doing some documentary work and I just need to be run and gun. I can't recommend a camera more than another. Obviously, the Sony does have more features and overall, I think everyone would agree that it's the better camera for most people, but the Blackmagic might be better in your situation if you don't have $10,000 to spend on a camera. The Blackmagic, a quarter of the price, I think, and the image quality is very convincingly better. You can't go wrong with either, to be honest. It's just think about your situation and what you're gonna be filming. All right, thanks for watching this video. Peace.